Hello and welcome back to another episode of Rufus Eats Cheese. Okay folks, uh, we have five cheeses here today. Um, those of you who uh, know me might have some idea what these cheeses have got in common because they don't look particularly similar. We got, I mean, these two obviously look similar and that one's a bit different. And those two are similar, but the answer is they're all local. So we had a request from Rachel, thanks Rachel, to do some local West Country cheeses. So we are in Devon in England and we have here the beautiful Devon Oak. Devon Oak is made about 25 miles away and that's a beautiful cheese. This is Cornish Yarg, which is another fabulous cheese, quite different looking to the others. We've got back here Cornish Blue and Dorset Blue Vinny. So these are the county I'm in, the county to the west and the county to the east. So they're all pretty close. The furthest away is actually the Yarg. Even though it's the next county, I'm on the eastern side of Devon and getting down to the middle of Cornwall is actually quite a way. So this one's from 95 miles away. That's the furthest away. Okay, um, let's start. I think we should start with our very own Devon Oak. Um, it's a beautiful looking cheese. It's got quite a tight, tight, firm looking texture. Um, the rind, the rind's very nice. It's dry. With a very subtle scent. It's not it's not really fiery, it's not pokey. So I think the best thing to do is to tuck straight into it because I have to admit, I'm actually not very familiar with this beautiful looking cheese. Uh, although I live in Devon, I'm actually from Cornwall. So um, these cheeses I'm very familiar with, this one not so much, but let's dive straight in. Okay. Get the old cheese wire on the go. We'll take a nice sliver down there. What oh, cuts beautifully, cuts very nicely. So, got a few little holes in there. I'll just give it a little break to have a look at the texture. Okay, so it's something like breaks something like a maybe a gouda or something, which is interesting. So it's how it will taste. Mmm, what gorgeous cheese. Mmm, lots of lactic flavours. It's very, um, very tart. And then a kind of cheddary, creamy butteriness comes in. The texture is very nice as well. I'm just going to try another piece with a good bit of uh, rind on the edge. The rind looks and smells quite um, delicate. Mmm. It's actually surprisingly complex, this cheese. Hmm. Well, it's, um, it's complexity probably comes from the fact that it, it is matured for a while. So it's, um, 
six or seven months it's matured for. So if you can see on the cut surface there how the um, the colour changes to the piece. I'll have one more little taste just for you guys. Mmm, that's lovely. That's definitely made my cheese list of cheeses I need to buy regularly. Mmm, mmm. I imagine. Though I haven't tried it, this would be incredible as um, cheese on toast or a cheese topping for something. It's got a great flavour. It's got that lovely um, lactic sourness that you get with um, very young cheeses like kafili. So, oh, but then such buttery flavours afterwards and a real a real bit of strength to it. Mmm, that's gorgeous. I really like that. Really nice. Um, right, what to do with these? I think we should start with the Yarg. Now the Yarg here, as you may be able to see, if that comes out well on the camera, I'll try and get a better shot for you. It's actually wrapped in nettle leaves and it's the nettle leaves themselves that attract a particular white mold so the um, the nettles are all hand-picked for this they're not mown down or anything with a big industrial thing this is all hand-picked nettles um, the um, the process begins much like any other cheese. Um, the moulds for it, the, the cheese moulds are all hand packed, so it's all hand process, start to finish. Once the uh, the curds have settled in the moulds and it's it's then able to sort of hold its own shape, the um, the cheese is put in brine overnight, so salt water overnight. Uh, then the leaves are added later and they're in concentric whirls. So there's someone whose specific job is putting stinging nettle leaves onto cheese. If you look really carefully, you can actually still see the very fine hairs of the stinging nettle. They don't sting at this point, by the way. They're not stingy anymore, but let's give it a try because I should imagine that the nettles themselves impart quite a lot of character to the cheese as well as looking fantastic and really quite unique I think let's cut a piece out of here dear me, made a bit of a mess of that I'm ashamed of myself, I need to go on a cheese cutting course I think the issue is that the because I didn't use a wire the knife perhaps isn't sharp enough so I've left a piece of the leaf here you can see sticking out so okay let's give this one a little try I'm gonna try pop that in half I'll try a bit from the what appears to be the top side so It's very light scent. I can just smell it. The rind. The rind almost has a fruitiness to it, which is interesting. Let's try it. Hmm, immediately different. Wow. Perhaps not the most aromatic cheese, but great flavour. Um, 
Mm. This is quite a young cheese, and you can really taste that. It still has a real freshness to it. Um, some lactic notes, but nothing like the um, the Devon oak here. Real creamy aftertaste. And the nettles. I actually rather like nettles as a vegetable. We quite often forage for nettles and they also make great beer. Mm. Try that a little bit. I'll try a piece from the edge here. So it's a little darker in colour. And we've got a bit more nettle. It's beautiful. It's actually a very old recipe. It's um 17th century recipe that was rediscovered by um, the Gray family, um, as is probably the most well-known fact about this cheese. And their name spelt backwards is Yarg, which is where the name's from. Um, it was um, afterwards uh, the um, different family purchased the name and the recipe and everything else, um, but it's still kept its name and it still kept its traditional recipe mm. it just stops just shop, stops short of being sour it's just a very slight um, you would get from a very soft young cheese so which i suppose this is we think this is four or five weeks it's been matured you compare that with say the the, the comte which i bought a little bit more of and at as well um that was um matured for two years you're bound to have a much lighter cheese this cheese while we're talking about it This is also yarg, but this is not wrapped in um, nettle leaves. It's wrapped in ramsen leaves. So ramsen's a, it's a fairly local English name for um, wild garlic. We get it growing in the hedgerows and we get it growing in the um, edges of the fields, woodlands, dark, fairly dark areas usually. Um, and so this cheese is wrapped in ramsen leaves instead of the nettles. So it still attracts a white mould. It's you can see it's quite different. If we compare the, the surfaces of the cheeses here, they're similar, quite similar. But this one does look a little different. So I think we should give this one a try as well. Mmm. Oh. You may have smelt, if you live in a region where they grow, you may have smelt the wild garlic growing in the hedgerows in, um, or in the woodlands in springtime. They produce the most beautiful white flower afterwards, but it's really pungent smell of garlic. But it tends to grow in huge swathes. You don't usually get one plant on its own. But let's try it with the cheese. Mmm. Wow. Interestingly, the the actual mould tastes slightly different. I suppose it would be different, as it's a different plant. It has quite a different character to it. Mmm. I suspect that if I tried some cheese from right in the centre here, well away from the the uh, rind, these two cheeses may taste fairly similar. But 
tasting them from the edge with a good piece of um, leaf on there. Mm. They're really quite different. And that, that's all down to the, uh, the properties that the leaf itself lends to the cheese during maturing. If you think it's how young this cheese is, four to five weeks maturing, it's um it's quite incredible really how much character it can get in that time just from uh, the leaves mmm gorgeous I really like those both of those right moving on to our last two so again so we, here we have um, Dorset Blue Vinny uh, this is almost sandy on the outside. I'm wondering if it's salt. It could be crystals, couldn't it? Could be. It's not particularly salty. I think it's salt. And this is the Cornish blue. So the um, the Cornish, the, sorry, the uh, Dorset Blue Vinny here, um, all cheeses have story they've been made for a particular reason I believe that uh, in Wales kafili was made very young and fresh and it was for the miners to take with them um, so the cheeses all kind of have a story of of where they've come from this cheese was actually used was actually produced to um, use up the milk that was left after you'd been skimming the milk to get the cream for butter making. So when you make butter, you take fresh milk, the cream rises to the top, you skim the cream off, and you then churn the cream to make butter. But you then have effectively skimmed milk left over. And so what they, dis what they devised was um, a method of using that skimmed milk um, to produce a rather lovely cheese but as a result it's quite high in protein and quite low in fat which is really surprising for um, you know a big slab of cheese you would imagine that it would be quite um, you know quite you imagine it being about 80% fat which it isn't at all um, it's also produced with um, vegetable rennet a vegetable based rennet whether that's traditional or not I don't know that may be a, a modern twist to uh, obviously increase the um, appeal of the cheese. Um, so that it's left in the moulds for several days once the curds are packed in there. Um, and then once it's turned out, the, um, the mould, by the way, is, is added at the time. It's added directly to the milk. It's not something that is... Um, kind of introduced after you've made the cheese you don't then try and introduce the mold uh, the mold is already within the milk so um, yeah let's give it a try it's ripened for 15 weeks as well so it should it should uh, have a fair bit of flavor to it I would think let's give it a try looks beautiful huge variation here between the the uh, almost caramelly colors near the rind and then moving in in the middle here very palest palest of yellow almost white inside and um let's have a sniff oh that's lovely It's almost, uh, almost fruity. You can smell, you can smell the mold, but it's not overpowering. It has um, a definite fruitiness to it. Again, the rind is, is quite mild. It's dry as well. It's quite a dry, nice dry rind. So let's give that piece 
a try. Mmm. It's a really soft, crumbly texture. Mmm. Wow. That's actually really quite complex. You've got um, hints of mushroom and I don't know whether it's the right thing to say, but almost apricots or something coming through. And then much richer notes. All the all the kind of dairy, creamy, buttery notes come through much later. So initially, initially it's tasting really quite light. Mmm. There's a saltiness to it as well. It's nice, um, the texture is nice and smooth there's no um, um, none of the crunchy crystally things that you get with um, sort of strong cheddars and things there's none of that but the um, hmm what a cheese we're so lucky to have all these cheeses and they're all I, I believe the producers of this Dorset Blue Vinny are now the only people in the world making a kind of um, official version of this, if you like. Um, you would imagine that more of the dairies would be trying to move into producing their own artisan cheeses because they all have such character. If you think every cheese essentially is made from curdling milk and yet the diversity you get is, is astounding. Um, oh, this beautiful texture on here is gorgeous. They have a very dense, very dense packed section up here near the rind, moving into a very light and crumbly. I mean, this should probably just break off quite easily. The very open, crumbly texture. Mmm. It's so lovely. It doesn't have, if any of you are familiar with Stilton, um, which is a, a very well-known vein cheese, that, um, it doesn't have any of the bitterness that you get the still in fact if I try pretty much just rind very very mild still would really be quite quite sour and overpowering this is very subtle there's definitely those lactic notes very slightly but to be honest, it's probably not. Um, what what the mold is doing, of course, in the cheese is is eating it. It's it's reproducing by digesting the cheese. Um, so one of the things that happens during cheese making, there are a great many chemical processes going on, but one of them is that um, the proteins begin to break down, um, and actually, the cheese has um, loose amino acids in it that are not combined into proteins so uh, in terms of a food it's really quite um, oh, oh that is so good that's so good I probably ate that a bit quick actually because it's so tasty I'm just going to trim this little piece off the end there and I will, I will try to eat it a little slower. Fresh, creamy with a 
almost um, woodland leaves or something I'm getting as a as a note there. Gorgeous. Mm. It's quite robust without without being overpowering in its um the the vein itself isn't overpowering. So the cheese is very flavoursome, but the the beautiful um rind and the um, the penicillin growing inside the cheese um, doesn't they accent the cheese rather than becoming the only flavour and I like that, that's really good um, by the way if any of you have an allergy to penicillin um, you will still want to check this with your doctor because I am not a doctor or a qualified nutritionist but the penicillin that's growing in the cheese, you shouldn't have an allergy to, even if you're allergic to penicillin. So you will want to check that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh, it's so beautiful. It's it's dry on the outside. Well, it's almost like it's like stroking an animal or something. I don't know. It's weird. It's lovely. Very nice. Dorset blue vinny. Okay, on to our final, last but most certainly not least, uh, this is Cornish Blue. Um, I've, by the way, I've let all these cheeses warm up for a good hour at um, room temperature, so they're all pretty good there. Cool but not uh, cold. Uh, this cheese... Um, Oh, wow. What can you say about Cornish Blue? Well, it is, um, again, a um, a blue cheese. You can see the vein through here. Um, once, the, um, once the truffles are produced and you have the cheese, if you look at the arc on here, we're going to have a cheese about this sort of size. Um, they are actually pierced from above to allow air to pass through into the cheese and this allows the vein to grow um, because the penicillin in this does require oxygen for it to grow um, that's why it's pierced um, again lovely dry rind very dry actually even drier than this one um, Very subtle nose. It sounds really silly, but I'm almost getting hints of the sea. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna cut, um, I'm gonna cut from this way, I think. Go. The rind does look quite firm, so I'm just going to cut down the side first, and then I'm going to cut down there, and I'm going to cut down. Okay, we have almost got through that. Right, let's give that a try. Definitely should cut away. It's actually quite. Loose, open texture on there. I think what I need to do next time is just buy a whole wheel of this and make it easier to cut. Wow, okay, so the outside rind is really hard, really, really quite firm. So it's taken, this is a reasonably sharp knife. If you watch me try and... <coughs> So a little bit of effort has to go in to cut through this. And yet we move to the centre of the cheese here. Even by this point, I'm seeing little pockets of moisture in here. And then by the time we get to the middle, I mean, just look at that. That 
is so moist, it's unbelievable. I'm gonna have to, I think, start with that because that looks beautiful. It is really quite white. It has a, a subtle nose actually. Boom, and we're off. Wow. Okay, it's, it's quite salty. Um, I'm getting almost caramel flavors. Definite sweetness to it. Little hint maybe of some crystals in there. Um, gosh, it's almost like pudding. That's incredible. Um, the, again, the vein notes really are an accent and not what the, they're not the only thing the cheese is about. The cheese has a lot more to it than just, um, a lot more to it than just that flavor well if the Dorset Blue Vinny was the kind of fruit course this is definitely the caramel dessert this is um, very different mmm with the variations in the maturity through the cheese Almost getting, almost getting like three cheeses for your money or something. Um, that was definitely more buttery. That bit. I'm going to try a piece over here because it looks a bit different again. So let's try this. This cheese, by the way, has won multiple gold awards for um, finest cheese. Um, but I believe in 2010, it got gold at the World Cheese Awards. That's quite an achievement, really, isn't it? For a, um, what to us at least is a little local cheese. Mmm. There's so much going on. That's a little more fruity. Definitely. Wow. Then all the saltiness is gone and I've got much more mature flavor. I mean, this is all, you could spread this. This is, look how soft this is. I don't know if it's, um, it's too visible. But if I take a little piece of this, you can actually just spread it, which is incredible. Uh, I'm not gonna waste it, obviously. <coughs> um, let's take this piece. You might be able to see here, this is cut right down through one of the pinholes where the cheese is aerated. And you can see the penicillin mold has grown following that line. Uh, mm. I do apologise, this is probably one of the hardest cheeses I had to describe. Um, and yet, that's what I'm fairly familiar with. We have almost salty caramel notes in the very soft centre. And then moving out to the edges, I'm getting a fruitier no. Oh, 
And with that rind adding um, autumnal flavours, but I'm not getting I'm not getting the kind of um, barn floor or anything like that that we've had with other um, with other cheeses where the rind has played such a large part. In here, the role of the rind seems to be far less than um, than is the case for the mould itself and the centre of the cheese being not quite liquid but certainly in a very soft paste form. I think this bit's from quite near the middle. It's so strange. Yeah, so much flavour and then it's gone for a few seconds and then you get a little hint of maybe some oakiness and then suddenly bang flavour's back but it's different. That piece definitely had some more of the, um, the bitterness that you associate quite often with this um, this penicillin mould um, that was a little more like the kind of um, stiltony flavours. Um, it's incredibly complex. I can't believe it. I can't believe how much variation there can be in one cheese. But I mean, if you look at it from the side, you can see, I suppose you do get this with Stilton as well. We have a very soft, young centre and a much harder, more mature outer. But the uh, That is a fabulous cheese. So, just to recap here, we have these beautiful local cheeses, or local to me at least. If you um, live in Los Angeles, they might not be that local. Um, so we have Devon Oak made in Oakhampton, quite close by, um, a lovely cheese. I might try another little smidge of that actually, because that is very good. Try another little piece. Mmm, beautiful, gosh. Coming to dish after the Cornish Blue, was right. Everything's been turned up to 11. That's lovely, just more of everything. Beautiful dry rind on it. Mmm. No apricotty flavours. Mmm. We have the Yarg. Two varieties of Yarg here. We've got the Yarg wrapped in nettles and the yarg wrapped in ramsons or wild garlic and then we have our dorset blue vinny which is the cheese that was uh, created to use up the milk after butter making so it's a cheese made with from skimmed milk very lovely cheese and finally our Cornish Blue, which um, yes, surprisingly complex cheese, but um, I feel a bit bad saying this, and luckily I'm not wearing my Cornish rugby shirt or anything. I have to say I think I prefer the Dorset Blue Vinny to the Cornish Blue. I'm so sorry to my friends out there who maybe revoking my passport and stuff, but um, yeah, that is a lovely cheese. Um, you can also say, quite factually, that I'm wrong in preferring this one, as this one's won a ridiculous string of rewards. Uh, it is a fine cheese, but there's something about this one that I particularly like, out of the two blues. I mean, obviously it's crazy to try and compare <laughs> compare the uh, the other way, but... Beautiful cheeses. 
So once again, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that red subscribe button down there. Uh, like and share on social media. And if you've got any questions, any comments, any cheeses that you'd like me to taste or um, recommendations or anything I'm doing wrong, if, um, if you are a member of the family that produces the yarg and you have seen me do something horrific to it, please let me know and I will do my best to redress that fact. So, um, yeah, keep eating cheese and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.